The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The birth of Jesus the Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. The Gospel of the Lord. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating the solemnity of the birth of the Lord, and this is one of those rare occasions in which we have a full week between our fourth Sunday of Advent and our celebration. And it offers to us just that extra time to be prepared, but also to enjoy and live the experience that the Church goes through with us in these days in preparation for the celebration. And as we do that year after year, celebrating Christmas again and again, we recognize the fact that there's nothing, there's no opportunity for us to capture everything that's taking place, but because of the mystery and the depths of the mystery that we celebrate year after year throughout our life, the Lord gives to us a deeper understanding and appreciation as we grow older of the great gift that he gives to us in these feast days. These readings that we'll have this week, very few will be able to probably to, to see them, but also just if you have an opportunity to read the readings, at home if you're not able to get to Mass, are wonderful episodes of the preparation of the immediate preparation that take place for the birth of Jesus and centers on Elizabeth and Mary, obviously, John the Baptist and Jesus in the womb. And the proclamations and the prophecies that come forward from Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and also from the episodes of Mary's life. They're wonderful examples for us to allow us, and the church gives them to us for that reason, to allow us to enter more deeply into what we celebrate a week from today. Today's readings center on Joseph, and today's readings allow us to take these days before Christmas, but also to read them through the heart of Joseph and what takes place in his life today and to back up and to understand the significance of what Matthew wishes to give to us in the Gospel today. The first reading, which is one which is so famous for the Church and used so often, is from an early century of the time of Isaiah, a prophet, to the King Ahaz. And he is sent by the Lord and given a message to give to the King because the King is being besieged by two of his neighbors. And the whole city of Jerusalem is in fear and trembling because of the imminent fall of Jerusalem because of two strong armies that have come together to lay siege to Jerusalem. And so the Isaiah Isaiah is sent by the Lord to speak to the king, and the king responds. But before the episode, before the reading begins today, just a few lines before that, 
he goes, Isaiah is instructed, go to the king and tell him to be attentive, to be quiet, and to not have fear. And you can see the similarity of the message that's given to Joseph today. Be attentive, be quiet, and don't have any fear because one will be born who will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And it has most that proximate salvation from the battle that is taking place in Jerusalem. But the message also speaks of something deeper of the one who will grant to Israel, to the holy people, everything that they need and God's presence among them to save them from their sins as well. That reading then becomes incorporated into the people's expectation of who will be born, who will be the Messiah that comes before the Lord and gives the message of salvation. And Matthew, fully aware of everything that has taken place and inspired by the Holy Spirit, allows this reading to be something that inspires us to understand who it is born of the Virgin Mary. And Joseph, in the midst of his anxieties and fears, and enter into his heart as well, the heart of Mary and Joseph today, with the anxieties and fears and lack of understanding that's taking place in their lives, Joseph is confronted again with a message of the Lord, which is, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. It's that sense of not being afraid. Mary receives the same message. After the resurrection, the disciples and apostles receive the same message. Don't be afraid. And I just leave that with us today in the midst of all the anxieties of our lives and the fears that are part of our lives to allow this message to become something that leads us in life because these fears and anxieties are not going to go away. They will always be there. And it's so many things. It's how we allow God's grace to instruct us as he instructed those who went before us of how to live in the midst of this world with all of its challenges and sinfulness, to not be afraid and to not be anxious. And the moment we address that and it comes up five hours later, we need the lesson of learning how to do it again. And Joseph, as well as Mary, but Joseph today because of the readings, is a wonderful intercessor and example for us of putting his trust completely in the Lord. The fear of the Lord is something that we all have, and we are all given in the gift of confirmation. And it's not the fear of trembling of the power of God. We understand his magnificence. But as we understand from our catechism and our growing up, it's the fear of losing our relationship with God. It's the fear of losing God as the one who loves us and being separated from the Lord. This is the fear that is part of the gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to us at confirmation. And it's a fear that points towards the Lord. It's not pointing towards myself, worried about my own existence or my reputation or my comfort or things like that in life. It's worry about my, rep, my relationship with the Lord, which I do not wish to lose, just like someone we love in life, our parents, those especially given to us, that we fear losing that love we have for them and their love for us. And that inspiration allows us to be attentive to all the things we do in life so that we never put at risk that relationship that is part of it. But the fear we have going through life is often inspired by our pride, often inspired by our weakness, our inability to put our trust in the Lord. We can see the episodes of Joseph and Mary, but think of the episodes that are part of our lives, the anxieties and fears that come naturally within our hearts that we need to dispel or at least put in a place through the grace of God to have the grace of Joseph and Mary to say, Lord, whatever you wish, because it is your will, it will be good for me in the long run and a complete giving over of ourselves to the will of the Father and the will of the Lord as Jesus gave us the example. Does it include suffering? Of course, because Jesus took that upon himself, being born into our condition. But it is also include that hope of eternal life and never having that relationship with God broken? Of course, as well. Allow this to seep in our hearts just this week. We'll see what happens at Bethlehem and all the anxieties and all the fears of the birth of a child as a refugee without a place to stay, and in the early days of his youth and all the things that take place in the life of Nazareth as well. Allow those anxieties and fears to mirror the anxieties and fears of our own life 
and see how God's grace allows this holy family to live through these events and to put their trust constantly in the Lord to allow God to be with them. And the Emmanuel Jesus, as given to all of his holy people, including to us in five, seven short days, will remain with us always, and we will never fear losing that, that relationship that we have with our loving Father.